Hi, I'm Jo from Jo's Country Junction, and I'm here today to share a few things on a floss tube with you today. Um, I've had quite the time setting up. My beagle dog, Rosie, has been making my life a little bit miserable. Uh, every time I put something down, she grabs it and tries to run away from it. I have the project bags like these with the little uh, plastic end on them. And she's been grabbing them and trying to chew them. And I've been taking them away from her. And then I put another project bag down. And then she grabs that one and tries to chew on it. So now I gave her a dog bone treat. And I'm hoping that she just kind of buzzes off and stays away. Um, uh, while I have these out, these are the project bags I use and I absolutely love them. I get them off Amazon and I'll put a link in the description below if you're looking for them. They're only like a couple dollars a piece and I buy the really bigger size, the 12 by 15, because most of my projects that I'm working on are bigger projects and the um, full size charts fit in them better. Um, now she has me all mixed up. Okay, so like a big chart like this that will easily fit in the larger size project bags that I'm gonna link below. And um, I really enjoy using them and they're cheap. I'm kind of a cheapskate, what can I say? I'd rather spend my um, money on linen and um, fancy floss than spending my money on a fancy project bag, but that might change too. Um, so the project I am working on is um, Newcastle Bouquet. And that's by Teresa Kogut. I'm sure you've seen it lots of times before, but uh, I um, am in love with it. I was in love with it the first time I saw it on market and I've continued to stay in love with it. I've only really done um, one bigger cross stitch project before. So this is a, an adventure for me. And I, if you watch my last floss tube, you learned that I was having trouble with the original called for linen, which is a week's. Um, I think it was in straw and I had a miserable experience with that. I couldn't get my border to match up. Um, I was continually having problems that I was off count and I finally gave up and I started over. And um, now I am so happy to say I have the border completely finished. Yahoo! I can't tell you how excited I am to have that border finished. All of the blocks have been filled in. Um, as I said, I'm kind of a slow stitcher. So um, what my goal was kind of was to finish one block, you know, one of the blocks right here inside of the border. Um, I was trying to do one of those a night. And it was a goal that was a reasonable goal for me because I don't stitch a lot during the day. Um, I'm busy and some nights I don't even get to stitch. Uh, I have a very active family with lots of grandkids in my life. And so I spend quite a few evenings and I have kids later in the evening because mom's a nurse and works overnights and dad's a farmer. So that leaves grandma to fill in the spaces and I'm thrilled to do that. But when I'm not filling in the spaces with those, I'm filling in the spaces of cross stitch. So look at that, isn't that just awesome? How do you not fall in love with that border? And I'm a really huge, huge, huge fan of red. So of course, I'm really, really loving this border. I do have to tell you one thing as I was stitching. Um, I originally went around and just did the little line that goes up and down. Oh, you can't really see. Let me do that here. Little line that goes up and down. I just did that first and then I went in and filled in the spots. Well, as I was doing that, I ran out of 801, that's the color that you use for that. And I was just sad because, hey, it's a DMC floss, yahoo, a cheap floss, and it stills mixed with some um, fancy floss. So I love that. That's one of the things I love about Teresa Kogut. She uses some DMCs and she uses some fancy flosses, so it makes my projects a little bit more affordable, which is awesome. Um, but here I am, I'm out of DMC and I just needed 801. Well, I didn't want to order it. Um, we live pretty rural, so anywhere really to get it was an hour away. And then one of my kids reminded me that they thought that uh, one of the shops about a half an hour away from me, the yarn shops, might have embroidery floss. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll do that. So then, you know how it is with COVID. I had to go look up what their hours were, look up what the requirements were. Well, they didn't open till 11 in the morning, so I decided that I would go venture out because I stay home as much as I can. And as I was venturing out, I went to Walmart first. And as I was passing down an aisle in Walmart, I saw that they had embroidery floss. And I looked and, oh, happy day. 
they had 801s, so I got a couple more 801s and was able to finish uh, the brown part of the border, which I was very happy about. And then I didn't have to end up going to another stop because as I said, I'm trying to limit my stuff as much as I can. But I'm super excited about um, my Newcastle bouquet project. Uh, the second I did the last stitch in the border, I had to take a picture of it and I had to send it in my, to my daughter, Kelly, who's also a cross stitcher. And she was like, yay, mom! Because she knows how, how exciting it is for me being I'm Really haven't finished that many big pro projects before. Um, one thing I had to ask about uh, that maybe you guys can all help me with. I have a friend and we walk a few times a week and uh, we do a three mile walk. Oh, I don't know, maybe three or five times, three, three to five times a week, depending on her schedule and my schedule. And so she is a cross stitcher, but she only does projects for a specific purpose. Like she's been making Christmas stockings for her grandchildren, but she doesn't cross stitch much in between that. She'll just decide, oh, I need a project. I'm going to make this. My daughter had a baby. I'm going to make the Christmas stocking. And then she doesn't cross stitch anymore besides that. So she said, because I was trying to figure out how long a project would take me. And she said when she does a project, she measure, measures her project out and she figures out how many square inches there are. And she thinks that it takes her about an hour to do a square inch. And that would be like a full coverage piece, like a Christmas stocking. But I'm just curious. So if this project is supposed to be a 17 by 10 and a fourth, how long, how many hours do you think would go into that project? Um, I'm not somebody who keeps track of my cross stitch, but I'm just curious what you think, you know, because for her, she said that she would figure that out. So that would be like 170 about square inches. So she would think it would take about 170 hours to complete a project. But again, that's full coverage. But sometimes I think full coverage is a little, um, easier because you don't have to count over so much and lose your spot so much because I don't know, maybe I'm just imagining that. But let me know, what do you think? Uh, do you think it takes, how many minutes do you think it takes to do a square inch of your cross stitch? Something to ponder. One of you who uh, keeps track of how long your project takes maybe can figure that out and let us all know because I'm sure some of you are also curious about that. So as I said, I'm mostly a monogamous stitcher but I decided, okay, it's sampler September. You can loosen your grip a little bit. You don't have to be quite so much of a monogamous stitcher. Come on, Joe, lighten up. You can do this. You know, you can have two projects. You can do it. So I thought, okay, I can do it. I can have two projects. So I decided that I would probably start this, which is another Teresa Colgate project. And it's... Um, Faith, hope, peace, love. And I also love this one from the moment I saw it at market. Um, I just thought it was really cool. And uh, I know a lot of people like will do a sampler or do a project um, for a special reason. Well, this one kind of, uh, I don't know, it touched me in a way just because I thought I'd kind of do it in honor of my husband and I. Um, my husband passed away in June of 2019. And I thought, you know, maybe, maybe, Every month on like the 26th and 27th, I'd work on it because the 26th of uh, July is our anniversary and the 27th of August was his birthday. So just like the 26th and 27th and every month, maybe I'd do that because, you know, I watch some floss tube. I see other floss tubers come up with some cool ideas to squeeze some different stitching into their life or squeeze some time for different projects in their life. And I thought, well, yeah, you could do that. That'd be cool. And then you wouldn't have to wait forever to get this started. So what did I do? I went and looked at the pattern, decided, yeah, you can kit that up. Yeah, this sounds like a good idea. You can do that. So I kitted it up and oh, now I went back to it and I found out that what's in there, Weeks linen. And it's the same linen that Newcastle Bouquet was on, the same linen that I had such a trouble with. So I took a deep breath and paused and decided, nope, I'm not going to do that. So... I'm not even going to start trying that on that linen. I'm just going to find a different linen. And if you watched me before, you know I know I like um, Vintage Country Mocha. And I also like stuff by Picture This Plus. So I started trying to figure out what linen I was going to use for it. And 
And originally I kind of, I wasn't, I love the sampler, but I kind of thought I might like it a little in a little bit of a lighter color. And so I had some picture this plus legacy. And so I did a tiny little start, but then I ran into a problem. See right here under faith, there's about three little stitches there. Those three little stitches are the white flowers that go right along here and you can't see them. Bummer. So then I tried to figure out what I was gonna do about that. So do I get a different linen? Do I get a different flower? Oh, there's Rosie making an appearance. Rosie. <laughs> yep, she just can't leave me alone. So what do I do? Do I change linens? Do I change color threads? Something different had to happen. So my daughter Kelly was here. My daughter Calissa was here. And I started talking to them about what to do. And I pulled out some more floss. And we played with that. And we did everything with that. And we just decided we didn't like anything. You know, we couldn't come up with something that really made us happy. So I went online. I found uh, Nancy at Needlecase Goodies on Etsy. I just love Nancy. She's awesome. And she had some different pictures this plus linen. So I know that Ale is a darker linen. And so I thought, ah, I'll do Ale. Well, then I was laying the threads out. Nah, look at Rosie. That bone didn't last long, did it? She's just going to be a pickle, I bet. So this will be interesting the rest of Floss too, and see how this goes. So I thought this is a darker linen. This linen, if you look at the, it looks a little closer to that darker color. But then when I did that, I kind of laid threads out. And then the part that is in the middle of this flower, that is also in the middle of this flower right here. It's just that it looks like a green. It just doesn't show up. And then as I was looking at the linen more and more, and at the chart more and more, I just, I don't know, I wasn't really excited because I don't know, like for me, this flower right here seems like it has a green outline and a light green inside. And that's not true. It has a brown outline and a different color in the inside. So I've just, I don't know, after talking about it and talking about it, I just got frustrated and I put it aside and I will address that again on a day when I'm a little bit more patient because that was not the day for that. Um, kind of like I'm wondering if today was the day for floss too because here's Rosie doing out my fingers. <laughs> what do I do with this dog? Um, actually, tomorrow's her birthday and she's going to be one, the goofy little dog. She has just been... Um, both a blessing and a curse to my life this last year. She's a, a pretty high maintenance dog considering she's just a beagle. <laughs> but okay. Anyway, back to what else I was on. Um, I also have a couple of things I want to show you because of my frustration about the faith, hope, peace, love sampler I, that I set that aside. I thought, okay, come on. It's sampler September. You can do something, Joe. Come on. You can do it. Well, you can have more than one project. You really can. <laughs> so I ended up going to uh, the local thrift store when I was getting groceries because I just can't stop. Can't not stop. I mean, I can stop now because they're not open due to COVID again. But anyway, I was there before they closed. And when I was there, I saw some pictures and I saw this picture. I wasn't necessarily excited about the picture. Um, I paid, what does it say here? Um, $5 for this. What I liked about it was the frame. See how big it is? It's really actually pretty big. So I bought it and I came home and I started digging through some of the things that I have charted. And one of the things I have charted is um, this Beatitudes by Little House Needleworks, and it will fit in there perfectly. I'm so excited. I think the frame was 15 and a half by 15 and a half, and this is like 14 and a half by 14 and a half, and so I don't like a big extra uh, border around the project, so I think it'll work just fine. Um, I'm really excited about that. So then I got thinking, well, maybe you should start that, being you already have a frame. Yeah, and look at Rosie. 
Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, so then when I was there, they also had um, this, this frame, or I guess it's a picture, but um, I was more excited about the frame because check out the frame. Isn't this kind of nice? Yeah, I like that. And I thought, oh gosh, one of my samplers will work in there, won't it? And so I came home and I did some more measuring for that too. And I figured out if I can get Rosie to move herself. Um, the other Teresa Kogut sampler that I have, um, Heaven and Nature, that one would fit perfect in there. Well, this one is slated next for me to stitch after I get Newcastle Bouquet finished. So I'm thinking I might just end up starting this. Being I already have the frame, how can I not? So... I think the Faith, Hope, Love piece will probably go on a timeout, and this one will probably move up for sure that it is the next one that I stitched. But I'm still really, 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 really tempted to do the Beatitudes. And remember I said I was thinking about stitching on the 26th and 27th? The Beatitudes happen to have been my husband's favorite Bible verse. And he actually had them wanted them, he requested that they be read at his funeral. So, being I was trying to do something to commemorate kind of him and our anniversary, I'm thinking I have the frame, it has a purpose, it has a meaning. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm really excited that I'll probably be starting this and it'll be my 26th and 27th of the month project. It's going to take me a while if I only do it that often, but uh, maybe when something else gets off the burner, this one will go to the front burner. But for now, I think... On the 26th, I'm going to start it. So I'm going to make sure I like the linen I have. I'm going to make sure I like the thread that I have, and then we'll see what happens. Yep, Rosie's back. <laughs> she gave me just a couple seconds of peace and freedom, but nope, she's back. So uh, with that, I think I'll let you go and um, get back to your own cross-stitching projects. And I just want to thank you so much for watching. I got so many great comments from people. Uh, on my first floss tube and I'm hoping that y'all comment and like this <laughs> episode as well. Uh, who can't give Rosie here a couple thumbs up, right? Okay, Rosie, you want to be seen, so here you go. There's Rosie. <laughs> so that's all for this episode of Floss Tube. Thanks so much for watching in and thanks so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Have a good day.